guys and welcome back to Morgan's Menu. So I'm super excited for today's video because we're going to be doing another copycat recipe video. But this time we're doing a copycat of 2 for 25 at Chili's. A group of friends and I have this weird obsession with Chili's. I don't really know how it started but I kind of got thrown into it when I started dating Mitch and I fell in love with it. I don't know what is it about it but they just have like great deals and great food and it's just become like just like a staple and like one of the things that we all do together. And even like I'm hanging out with him this weekend and hold on, let me find the message. So in our group text from everyone that's hanging out this weekend, uh, we were talking about like plans and what we're doing and it says, I'm down for whatever as well. Can I please just make one request? Chili's on Sunday. <laughs> and then someone else goes, a family tradition. So. The obsession is real and I'm super excited to see if I can recreate some of our favorites. So if you don't already know, the two for 25 at Chili's is basically something that you split along with another person and you each split an appetizer, you get your own entree, and then you split a dessert. I'm going to be doing chips and salsa, their Cajun chicken pasta, and their chocolate chip cookie skillet. So really excited to see how those turn out and let's get started. All right, and first up, we'll start with our favorite appetizer, their salsa. So not too many ingredients needed for this. We have some diced onion, minced garlic, cumin, salt, a can of Rotel or diced tomatoes with green chilies, whole peeled tomatoes, granulated sugar, lime juice. Now we're gonna start by adding our diced onions and whole peeled tomatoes in either a blender or a food processor, whichever you have will be perfectly fine. So we'll start with the onions and then you're going to add the whole peeled tomatoes. I accidentally bought the wrong size of can for this so I only needed half but they do make just like the normal 14 ounce size can so you could just buy that. So you want to add both the tomatoes and the juice. Then you're going to start by getting your blender or food processor ready and then go in ahead and thin that up just a little bit. Don't want to do this too much here because you don't want to make it into like soup. Just do it just a little bit so that the tomatoes will get crushed up into a salsa. And then I basically took a spoon and kind of swirled it around to make sure that it was the right consistency. Now we're gonna add the rest of the ingredients. So we'll start with our minced garlic and salt, cumin, the whole can of Rotel tomatoes or the off-brand a bunch of dried cilantro, and some lime juice. And lastly, don't forget about the sugar. So then we're gonna do the same thing, just lightly pulse this. Again, don't do anything crazy. You don't wanna do this for very long at all. A couple little pulses will get it to that nice texture. So as you can see, it is pretty runny, but that's really how chili salsa is. So that's how we wanted to make it for this. So basically, again, I just took a spoon, made sure it looked like it was the correct consistency and there weren't any big chunks that I would needed to re-blend. And at this point, I went ahead and added in a little dash of cayenne pepper. Now, actually, you want to use jalapenos here. I just completely forgot to buy jalapenos. And if you like that flavor of jalapenos, I would highly recommend adding that because I think it would have added to the salsa. But if you forget or don't like jalapenos, you can just add a little cayenne pepper to add just a little bit of spice in it so it tastes like salsa and not just like tomato sauce. So now at this point you want to go ahead and either put it in container or put the top on your kind of smoothie container and let this sit in the fridge overnight. If you don't have overnight you could do just for a couple hours but the longer you let it sit the better the flavors are going to come together. So now moving on to the Cajun chicken pasta. Now again, not too many ingredients on here, but we of course have some penne pasta, parmesan, butter, tomato, half and half, chicken breasts, and then spices. Now you can use just like a Cajun seasoning that you find at your grocery store. I just wasn't able to find one. So basically to make homemade Cajun seasoning, you just need paprika, cayenne pepper, salt, pepper, garlic powder, oregano, and thyme. So just get that together and then also have some lemon pepper seasoning. So now what we're gonna do is kind of have to multitask for this recipe. So we need two pans on hot and then a pot of boiling water. 
So we'll start while that's heating up, go ahead and dicing up our onion. Now you're just gonna use this to top at the end, so you only need like maybe a half or cup or so, not even that much, kind of just to add a topping to the pasta at the end. And now we're gonna throw together our Cajun seasonings. So we have two teaspoons of smoked paprika, about half a teaspoon of oregano, half a teaspoon of thyme, a whole teaspoon of garlic powder, a dash of cayenne, and salt and pepper to taste. Now you could alter these a little bit based on kind of your preference on spice and different things like that. And as you'll see here, I only added about a teaspoon to start of smoked paprika, but then added a bit more for the flavoring that I wanted. And now you're just gonna take that seasoning and cover the chicken breast. So you just wanna make sure they're covered, front and back, all sides. Now we're gonna start by cooking up our chicken. So we're gonna add about half a tablespoon of butter into a small pan. And then once that melts up, you're just going to take the chicken breasts and lay them down. Now I was only doing this for two people, so I only did two chicken breasts, but of course increase that if you are doing it for more. And you're basically just gonna cook the chicken about five to six minutes per side. And you also wanna cook about two to three servings of pasta, just according to your box instructions. So now it's time to start on the sauce. So we'll throw in about one and a half tablespoons of butter and let that melt down. Then we're gonna do about two cups of half and half. Now you'll see at the end here, my sauce is a little bit runnier than I would have liked. So may wanna just decrease the half and half here, but again, it's gonna depend on how many servings you want. And then of course, add in some seasonings directly into the sauce itself. So we have garlic powder, lemon pepper seasoning, and salt and pepper to taste. And then with the sauce, all you really need to do is just kind of continue to stir it around. Now focusing on the chicken over here, it's been about five or six minutes. And as you can see, it's getting a nice kind of browned crust on the outside of, from the seasoning. So you just wanna flip those over and let them cook again for about five to six more minutes. Now that will depend on the thickness of the chicken itself, if you need to increase or decrease that, but if you have pretty small, thinly sliced chicken breasts, then you won't need to do any longer. And then at this point, we're just kind of waiting. We're letting the chicken finish up, stirring the sauce every once in a while, and then once that chicken has that brown side on each, go ahead and pull it off the heat and set it to the side. Then once your pasta is done, you can just strain it out and set that to the side as well. And like I said, really with the sauce, you don't have to watch it too much. Just kind of keep waiting until it gets to a low simmer and starts to just boil. So you can kind of see it here. It's starting to separate on top a little bit and it's starting to get to a low simmer. So you just wanna, at this point, go ahead and stir it and let it thicken up until it gets the consistency you want it. And then add in your pasta. Now again, at this point, my sauce is a little bit too thin, so in hindsight, maybe I would have added a little flour or something into it to thicken it, or just use less half and half in general. So make sure you alter that kind of when you make the recipe yourself. And then we're just going to go ahead and slice up our chicken breasts so that we can top that on top of the pasta. So here's the pasta, and it is a little runny, but honestly, it still turned out fine. The flavors are all still there. So I just put it on a big plate, and then you're gonna top it with your sliced chicken breast. And then next, we're gonna top it with those diced tomatoes. So again, it's kind of a personal preference on how much you want here, but just throw some on top. And then lastly, you want to top it with some shredded Parmesan cheese. And last but certainly not least, we have our chocolate chip cookie skillet. So you're basically just going to make a big chocolate chip cookie. So you just need some chocolate chips and butter, salt, white sugar, whole wheat flour or regular flour, brown sugar and egg, vanilla extract and baking soda. So starting with kind of a small to medium bowl, go ahead and add in half a cup of flour half teaspoon baking soda, and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. This is going to be your dry ingredients bowl. Then you just wanna mix all of those together to combine them. And then in a bowl that's a bit bigger, you're gonna add in your wet ingredients. So we have a half cup of softened butter, 
a half cup of white sugar and a half cup of brown sugar. And then you're going to get those combined till they're smooth. Then you're gonna add in your teaspoon of vanilla extract and one large egg and get those mixed in as well. Now we're just gonna add in our wet ingredients into our dry. So as always, I add in about half, mix it together and add in the rest just to make it easier to mix. And once it gets to that nice doughy consistency, you want to go ahead and turn off your hand mixer, get a spoon and get out any of the leftovers that are stuck in your mixers. And then give it a quick stir with a spoon. And lastly, you're going to go ahead and fold in your chocolate chips into the dough. So now you're gonna take an eight inch size of a cast iron skillet. This is a small one. You can get it really cheap on Amazon. If anybody's interested in the one I bought, let me know. And you just wanna take it and grease it up with some butter to make sure nothing sticks. Add your cookie dough in and just kind of push it around to flatten it out so that's all nice and even so it'll bake even once you throw it in the oven. And here's what it'll look like when it's all ready to go in. So you're gonna bake it at 350 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then I checked it about 15 or 16 minutes and pulled it out and stuck a toothpick in it to make sure it was done. As long as the toothpick comes out clean and the top is just starting to brown, you're good to go. So here's everything all set up. So we have our chips in a bowl with our homemade salsa. And we have our two plates of pasta topped with our chicken, tomatoes, and Parmesan cheese. And lastly, our cookie skillet. So with the cookie skillet, you can go ahead and serve it alongside some ice cream or just plain, whichever you prefer. Alright guys, and that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. The recipes turned out so good. The only one that I probably would alter a little bit when I make it again, and yes, I mean when, not if, um, is the Cajun chicken pasta. The sauce, as I mentioned, was really runny, so I think just kind of altering the amount of half and half that I used would help that but also again just like throwing in some like flour or something in the cooking process would help thicken it up so I would definitely change that but otherwise the flavors even in that dish were all still there and were delicious so now I know I can make chilies at home even though I'm still probably gonna go there but I'm feeling lazy and let them cook it for me so if you have any questions on any of the recipes, make sure you leave me comments down below and leave me comments if you try any of these recipes as well. If you're new here and haven't subscribed, make sure you go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my videos that I post on Wednesdays and Sundays. Thanks again for watching Morg's Menu and hope you have a great day. Bye guys.